Hey guys, it's Conf here, and we are at Six Flags Great Adventures 2024 opening day. We are the first ones here, as you can see. And I do want to point out something neat here at the entrance on 537. The flag colors that are on the sign there are also up there on the flags. And even the cones match the colors of the flags going across. Great attention to detail. We have now moved up to the speed bump right here by Hurricane Harbor. And just barely over the fence line there, we can get a look at the new for 2024 now, Splash Island over at Hurricane Harbor. You can see some of the new um, slides over there, in addition to the big water play structure. The yeah. current line of cars Wait, all see. the way back there. Quite a large selection of people here, and it looks like everyone is stuffing into the right lane because that is the speedy parking lane. entrance gate here and we can see that lanes 9, 10, 11, and 12 are all speedy parking and everything over there looks like it's not speedy parking but every single one of them is now equipped with these gates you can see so there's also some cameras at some of them as well I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work but it seems like this is for pre-registered speedy parking people only um, but keep that in mind if you have speedy parking keep right when you get to the tolls I'm also just now noticing these cameras are the plate scanners, so you don't have to have a front plate, which is good because it's not required in a lot of states. So they have the back plate scanner right there. All right, so that was a mess. Speedy parking was not open. So they had everyone from all the far right lanes cut all the way over to the left. Um, yeah, I got to give some flack to the park for that one. That was a mess. Preferred's entrance is all the way in the back corner now. So everything's changed, but yeah, that was a mess. Right here, we have the new VIP Savannah Sunset vehicle right here, along with the preview here for Savannah Sunset's tents. Looks really, really cool. And up here, we have the new park map set up across the entrance area over here. And right here is the brand new priority entry. It looks phenomenal. They got planters out here with red flowers and a nice big red entrance here. It looks really, really great. So I'm joining the club. And this is a completely new view of this area over here. This is, of course, where Flash will be running. We're taking a closer look at it later. We can see a ton of land clearing that's been done. The coaster is going to run straight through here. It's going to look awesome. Crowd levels aren't too high in the regular line, but over here in the priority line, Lots of people here. Five minutes till opening. We have a ton of people out here waiting to come in. Brian's walking around, park president. It's looking like a phenomenal opening day. Crowded, but it's gonna be great. Here we go. The first operating day of 2024. The 50th anniversary of Great Adventure. And here we go with the new stuff. First of all, Main Street Market has been completely renovated and looks fantastic. Look at that. We're gonna go into Six Flags Universe to get our wristband, our double ride wristband. Right away, we have some brand new 50th anniversary merch. We have some new sweaters here. We have these tigers, more, lots of great merch here. Looks absolutely fantastic. And here we have the first of three new roller coaster coffee locations. This one is next to Sweet Treats. New logo, new signs, looks phenomenal. And we'll go inside Main Street Market a little later. We're gonna go get some rides in. Now we are walking down Dream Street. First of all, we have the carousel, which has been completely repainted and looks absolutely phenomenal look at the fresh colors on the pillars here it looks really really great and as we round the corner we will see the brand new dream street pathway and here it is the brand new dream street pathway open for the first time in well over 40 years this looks phenomenal here we are so the bricks are not the customized ones yet they're going to be slowly putting them in as time goes on but this looks great and of course the fact that we can just walk through now so nice really changes the entire dynamic of the park and it looks like in the middle here they have this shaping that almost looks like when you're in an aerial view the tents it kind of has the same sort of pattern there which looks really cool fifth tent. the fifth tent
So now as we make our way up here towards El Toro, which is obviously gonna be our first ride of the season, we have a new roller coaster coffee location right here, which is replacing the old Funnel Cake Factory. And down there, Frontier Adventures is blocked off at that point because Log Flume and Runaway Train are not open yet. So they have this sign over here that you go this way to access Medusa, the Safari, and El Toro. Very soon we will not be needing the wild walkway, well actually today, because the new pathway between El Toro and King Dakar is open. That and here we have the entrance to the brand new path to King Dakar. They are reusing the old queue from Rolling Thunder and El Diablo. So you're going to go through there and back around that way. We'll get a closer look at that after we ride El Toro, but that's a great new thing to have. So we just got off of the first ride of the season on El Toro. I was in row two and overall it rode really well. Of course it's slow because it is the morning. Um, I'm walking over here now to get some footage of it, but it pretty much felt the exact same as last year, just that the turnaround was a lot smoother. Granted, I also rode row two, so I have a bit of a biased opinion there since it was a non-wheeled seat, but this turnaround was significantly smoother, no jackhammering, rode really well. This right here is the third train of the season. Good. So we're going to go over to the Khan Toro path a little later on. We are going to walk over here towards Medusa. This is the only way you can access Medusa currently. And also, Zumanjaro is up. Well, it was. Uh, <laughs> two of the gondolas are stuck. One is no longer. Um, see what happens there. But... So walking over here, I don't really see anything going on with mine train. Doesn't look like there's any new paint or anything. Can see, um, I believe two trains sitting over there on the transfer track. They only ever run two trains during the season. Um, looks like they're walking back. Maybe Medusa isn't open quite yet. So Medusa currently is not open yet. And this right here is the current park boundary. This is gonna be moved back come March 30th, but that's when the safari will open. Um, I can't really see any updates on the safari. It looks like my train actually has one train in the station, one train on the transfer track here. So I imagine it should be opening relatively soon. But yeah, here we go, park boundary. Nothing new over here at the arena, but we could see from El Toro that there's a ton of log flume parts in the arena. And the part of the dip back there where there was originally a additional drop on log flume is missing. So maybe we could see that original dip return. So now we're gonna walk through the brand new path that brings you to King Taka and Zumanjaro. We can see right here, we have a little advert for Flash, uh, Splash Island and the Safari, but this is the new path. They've gone to, decided to go with asphalt. Um, definitely a little bit of a temporary path. I imagine a lot of the fencing will be removed soon, but you can see over there, that's where El Diablo used to be. Tons of benches along the path here. Um, like I said, imagine more will be done in the future. We still have, saw X's big sign up over there, but the fact that this is here now, you don't have to walk all the way around, such a great change. Really great shots of Toro from back here too that you can't normally get. So if you're a photographer, come check out this path. And there's the sign on this side pointing you towards Medusa, Safari, and El Toro. Like I said, King Dakar is not open, but Zumanjaro is. We're actually gonna elect to walk this way towards the boardwalk and check out what's new over there. Now we're all gonna go ride Twister.
We just got off Twister. How was that, Ace? A few spins. A few spins, Dad. Uh, one of my favorite flat rides. Doug, how was that? Oh, that was definitely spinning. <laughs> Tom? That was really good. Jack? It's fun. I haven't been on it in a while. So now over here on the boardwalk, we have the new park boundary, which is, of course, with this fence right here. Green Lantern sign, not on there quite yet, but we can see over here a few updates. So for one, they have repainted that backstage building. It looks a lot nicer. Lots of construction equipment back here. And it looks like Chickies is gone. So there's gonna be a lot of changes coming to the boardwalk. Nothing new with the parachute tower here, but really excited to see everything that happens over here. We didn't get to talk about it earlier. How was Toro? Toro was really good. The turnaround is really smooth now overall. Much smoother than it was the end of last season. Tom? You can feel all the work that the park put in in the off season really well done. Doug? The experience was awesome, especially it was a lot smoother. Just, it was it was good, it was really good. Yeah, it was great to get back on it. Like they all said, it's a lot smoother. Um, yeah, I recommend trying it again. Al Toro saved. I was so impressed, that turnaround. No problem, Dad, no problem. It's running oh, great. Man. So right here is Totally Kicking Chicken, which is being fully renovated this year to become more of a sports bar. It's not open quite yet, but we can peek through here. And look at that, all redone, nice new flooring, some new paint in there as well. Can't wait to see what it looks like once it's open. Looks like they put up a new banner on that basketball game that was new last year. Over here, this is Flags, which will become Six Flags Adventure World, but look at this. Brand new Flash promo right here with the train. It's a different view than we have on the website. Um, really cool, lots of other advertisements here. Buy a brick, leave your mark, all this other stuff, Savannah Sunset. And of course, back over here at Dream Street, which I still can't get over how phenomenal this looks. This is one of the best changes they have ever made to the park. It actually looks the way it looked back in 1974, according to my dad, right? Oh, this is like, brings back such memories because when you came in, this is pretty much exactly what you saw. This is looks phenomenal. Looks absolutely incredible. It, pictures don't do it justice, truly. Truly just cannot state enough how phenomenal this looks. They have new planters around too. And I like the way they routed this pathway. They pretty much just cut the bricks off for this path over to the Boardwalk Game Center right here and kept this whole structure right here and just laid new concrete next to it. Really looks great. Come check this out. This should be your first stop when you come to Great Adventure for the 2024 season. As well as the carousel looking absolutely spectacular. They did so much work to it. They repainted all the pillars. They repainted all of the rideable animals. They repainted the floor. Looks phenomenal. I mean, just look at how nice the attention to detail is on those horses. Absolutely impressive. Now we're gonna walk into Yum Yum, which has supposedly undergone some changes. Obviously there is no longer freestyle machines, but they supposedly changed a few things in here, so we're gonna go check it out. So it's essentially the exact same look, just that now freestyles are gone. There's a little bit of extra seating. Otherwise though, Yum Yum looks the same. They have this nice little fenced in area over here by Joker with some benches and everything. It does actually look like it's open just to go in and sit there, which is really nice. Back up here by the fountain, we're gonna go check out Main Street Pub in a second. First, we're going over to Six Flags University to get our double ride wristband. They didn't have them available earlier, but Main Street looks so nice now. There's a new sign over there for Head of the Line, which is the hat store. They have, of course, Roller Crystal Coffee and Main Street Market, which we're also gonna check out while we're over here. Finally, we got our hands on the double ride wristband. Now I'm actually gonna go inside the new Main Street Market. First of all, we got automatic doors, which is great. And look at this. Wow, completely remodeled. This looks fantastic. Seems like a lot of the same merch as Six Flags Universe, but this is really nice, much nicer than it used to look. It didn't even look bad, but now very modern, really nice look. I'm gonna take a peep inside of Roller Coaster Coffee over here. I imagine it's probably the same. Yes, it is the exact same that used to be, just with Roller Coaster Coffee branding now. Here's another look at the head of the line shop. Got this new sweater here with the hat, along with this over here, another hat, and a new sweater. There's a new sign right there for Great Adventure Resort, promoting all four aspects of the park. You see inside there, through the glass, there's a new queue set up for Funnel Cake Factory. You order over there and then pick up stuff later. Right here we have a new location, Looney Tunes Live. Looks like it's gonna be where you can go inside and meet the Looney Tunes. They have all the different show times here, so you can see which characters will be in there at what time. Really, really cool. Nice to see that the park is creating a dedicated Looney Tunes meeting area. And right here is the giant construction wall for Flash. Vertical velocity, look at that. This is impressive. We can see all the footers have been poured for the most part. Kind of hard for me to see here with the glare, but you can see they go all the way back. 
Tons of land clearing has been done. This looks great. Another shot right there of all the footers that just go down the straight line. A few sticking out elsewhere. Look at this. Great view here, Flash. Lots of progress. Giant Wheel is still undergoing its renovation. No cars are on quite yet. Uh, I can't tell if they repainted it quite yet. It's a little tricky to tell. Looks like they definitely have some work to do though. This should be ready by the 50th anniversary celebration starts, which is around Memorial Day. Right here, they have renamed Sky Bar to Skyline Taps. Looks like it's got a bit of a new paint job up there. Of course, the new sign looks really, really nice. And it also looks like Skyscreamer Extreme Flight is still there. And if we look up, there it is. No one on it quite yet, but it is still open. We have a new sign right there that has the new Great Adventure Resort logo. And unfortunately, Deja Vu is not open today. And they got a new sign too that has the Great Adventure Resort logo on it. But there you go. We're gonna see a lot of the resort branding across the park. This right here used to be the Rolling Thunder photo opportunity, but it is now a giant 2024 park map. There's a lot of these spread out throughout the park. And this right here is the third and final roller coaster coffee location, replacing what was supposed to be six below. It's not open quite yet. Right here, we have Barnstormer, which is not open quite yet, but it is scheduled to be open this weekend, which is great to see. It looks like they have some new signs as well for the entrance and exits of the ride. New logo right there for the ride as well, the sign. So really excited to finally see this open. I know it's been a long time coming, but it is supposed to be open at some point this weekend. Maybe we'll see it open later today, but this is great to see. It appears that Nitro is unfortunately on one train, judging off the massive line here. Hopefully it'll be on some more trains later on in the season. Over here at Congo Rapids, which is now Roaring Rapids, the sign has not been updated yet. We do have this new sign right here with the new logo. So hopefully we'll see this logo updated soon. And just barely over here from Roaring Rapids, we can see all of the flash tracks sitting over there. Pretty crazy to see it this close up. Now we can see all those LSM sections, lots of tracks been delivered. And in addition to that, the retaining pond here from Roaring Rapids is being redone, which is great to see. There goes Nitro with its sole train operating today, which is the A train. And Sean here has been able to get his hands on the new 2024 cup. That's what it looks like. It's bright orange. And have you drank out of it yet? <laughs> yeah. How's the straw? The straw it looks like it's um, slightly smaller in girth than the previous straws. And also the cup is um, slightly smaller too in size. But otherwise, solid? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good cup. <laughs> Skull Mountain is unfortunately closed today. We did hear that they are making some major improvements to the ride itself with some new theming and whatnot. We'll see that closer to May and Memorial Day, but that's very exciting to hear. And over here, the Skyway is completely blocked off. The sign is off the station. We can't really get too close to the other Skyway station, so we're really just gonna have to go off of what we see on this one. And as you can see, there are no gondolas in the station. The queue is still there though, so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with this. So it does not look like the VIP lounge is open quite yet. I imagine they'll probably have it open a little later on in the spring, but really curious what they wind up doing with the space as time goes on. And as I noted in past videos, Wonder Woman and Sky Screamer are not included in the double ride days, but other rides are, as long as you get this pink wristband. The directional board for Congo Rapids has been updated with Roaring Rapids and is listed as coming soon. I haven't noticed any for Flash, but if I do, I'll definitely grab a shot of that, but you can see it on both sides there. It looks like they've also put up those banners they had in years past on this archway here to commemorate the park's history. We are slowly but surely making our way towards the front of this line. All right, so there's been a bit of a lull in the vlog, we spent a lot of time waiting over here at Johnny Rocks to get our food, and I was trying to get the everything new video out, but the park overall just looks absolutely fantastic. It is really crowded, and of course, all the one train operations on a lot of the coasters definitely is making it feel extra crowded, plus the double rides. I still have only ridden two rides today, so we'll see if that changes, but Jack, how has your day been so far? It's been okay. It's some beautiful new changes to the park. I uh, really love the Dream Street Path and the Cobb Path, um, but I think Food service has been a little slow. Overall, you can definitely tell they're struggling with staffing a little bit today. Yeah, definitely. But it's a beautiful day, lots of great yeah. changes. How's opening day going for you guys so far? <laughs> what are you talking about? How's opening day? Oh my god, I'm having a great time. Um, 
it, opening day challenges, but we're navigating them. I'm just happy to be here with the boys. We can see the, the massive line for Johnny Rockets behind. Dad, how is opening day going so far? I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far. I mean, just the whole Dream Street thing, honestly, if they just did that, I'd be more than happy. But I mean, I think they're handling it well. I mean, there's a lot of people here, a lot more than I really expected. And I think they're handling it really well and everything looks great. Absolutely. Johnny, how is opening day going so far? Pretty good so far. I mean, it's packed. Absolutely. I can't believe how packed it is. Yeah. It's unexpected. Yes, it is. Ace, how's opening day going? Oh, going okay. Going okay? Just scoping out the park. Really, the, the whole point of coming opening weekend for us, at least, was to see everything new. We knew rides would not really be very plentiful. I mean, the park is really crowded. Operations are limited. This is the earliest the park has opened in a very long time. So I'm just enjoying the day. We're kind of walking around, seeing what's new, and maybe we'll get on a few rides. We've decided that we're going to go over to Zumanjaro, but we're going to take a bit of a more scenic route to try out the two new pads that are introduced this year. And they really have just completely changed the dynamics of the park. You can definitely tell that food locations are very limited today. This Primo's right here, which usually doesn't have a line at all, mobbed. And it looks like this directional board has also been updated, just like the one for Roaring Rapids. You see Mind Train with the new logo on there, as well as Log Flume, both labeled as coming soon. Yeah. It looks like the Empanada Guy branding has been stripped from this building, and now they just have some adverts on here for Savannah Sunset and the entirety of Great Adventure Resort, so. Oh well, I guess. See Zoom and Jaro up there in the distance. That's gonna be our next ride of the day, our third ride of the day, my third ride at least. There also appears to be some pretty significant changes over here with King Dakar's queue setup. So you can see over there that the opening that used to be there is kind of contorted around a little bit, so it's not open right there. They have this right here split into two entrances, one for flash pass, one for regular. And they've also blocked off our little shortcut right here in between the lockers. But over here you can see this opening right here. And I'm guessing this is either flat. I'm thinking this is probably an ADA entrance um, because it looks like Flash Pass is routed right here and comes straight across. And this is the new merge point right here. That's the general queue. So you'll have all that queue space there and then you'll get sent up over there. But big changes here. Uh, this looks like it's set up pretty well, honestly, for double sided lockers to be implemented fairly easily. So I look forward to seeing how this winds up working when King Dakar does open. So now I'm making my way down to Zumanjaro and this right here, this sort of like area they carved out, doesn't look like it has anything, but we're gonna take a look down here at what is presumably gonna become the safari base camp. I can already see some safari trucks sitting over there. So when we get a little closer, I'm gonna take a closer look at what is going on over there. So over here, it looks like we do have some things being stored over here for the safari. There's a bunch of trucks, looks like five of them. Um, not all of them are completely done, but it looks like these ones over here do have fresh decals for the logos on them right there, which is nice to see. Um, those ones over there look like they've been worked on a little bit as well, but I'm not really seeing anything with regard to the Safari Base Camp aspect of it. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be ready to go come opening day for the Safari. We'll have to wait and see on that, but definitely exciting to see the Safari Off-Road Adventure coming back. Looks like they're moving some of the Safari trucks right now, actually. That one doesn't look like it's marked for it. So we just did not one, but two rides on Zumanjaro, thanks to our little double ride wristband here. It's the only time I actually like the double rides on opening uh, weekend because it worked out good on this. Um, but Zumanjaro was so good. It was great to get back on it. It hits that much better when you haven't ridden it in months. And we did see some interesting stuff up there. All of the drops, or at least most of the drops on the backside of Log Flume are missing their trough pieces. And a lot of them are sitting inside the Northern Star Arena, and some of them are also sitting over by Nitro in the backstage area. Toro has a massive line, so I don't know that we're gonna be able to get back on it today. But Tom, how was Zumanjaro? I didn't even think to look at all the construction going on, but it felt great to be back on that ride. I definitely want to target it more this year. And I think I can claim to be the first person to ride it in a chiller polo, so that'll that'll be my big claim to fame. There you go. Austin? It was good. It was really good to get on something that didn't have an hour long wait today. Yes. And the double rides came yes. handy. So it was a good ride. I love the four sons of Manjaro. Jack? <laughs> it was good. Ken? Double rides! Double rides! <laughs> Dad? Double rides. Johnny? Pretty good. 
Worth Ace. the walk. Worth the walk indeed. We've made it over to Medusa, a much shorter trip from Zuinjaro than it used to be. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a rider too since we get double rides. You know it's a pretty crowded day when Medusa has a line like that. And if you haven't been able to figure it out from the duration of the video, most rides are on one train. Toro is, Nitro is, supposedly Devil Now is, this is, I think Batman is too, so be prepared to wait a little bit. I just rode Medusa. I rode it twice. I took advantage of the double ride. Um, it's Medusa, not my favorite ride, that's for sure, but running fairly well this year, pretty quick, pretty much the same as last year. How was it? I thought it was noticeably more smooth than last year, but I, I don't know. I, it was nice to use the double rides on this one too. It was great riding for the first time since October with the incident, and the back row is always the best on this. Yeah, they rode in the back, I rode in the front, well, row two. Row 2 felt pretty much the same smoothness-wise as last year. Ken, how was it? I liked it. Yeah. Jack, how was it? It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny? Pretty good. I enjoyed the ride. How was it for you guys? It was pretty good. better than last year. Yeah. Good. Um, I think we're going to head this way because we have no other choice. It's blocked off over there. Um, I think everything still has crazy long lines, so maybe we'll go to the other side of the park. I'm not sure yet. From everyone I've talked to throughout the day, it seems like the improvements they made right here in the turnaround for El Toro have really made a world of difference because it used to jackhammer quite a bit through this particular area right here. This year, from my one ride, and that's probably going to be my only ride today, it was very smooth. Granted, I rode in a non-wheeled seat but Toro's much smoother this year than in years past. Nice Taking every opportunity we can to walk down Dream Street because it really is such a nice walk. I mean, it looks phenomenal. The view you get of the carousel, which is now freshly repainted, it really cannot be stated from a video. You gotta come experience it for yourself. It looks fantastic. The line to get food at Yum Yum is out the door. That is nuts. It's all the way out there. A bunch of switchbacks in there that is crazy we're taking a look down at this path down here which we're probably not going to be using very much anymore because of the dream street pathway but it looks like they might have done something over here i don't remember this fence being here and just this whole area here along the lake looks a little different to me and it looks like they kind of continued this whole pathway they have down around that way and it kind of loops around here so you can go for a nice scenic walk right along the lakefront another really long line at the other primos uh, <laughs> this is crazy I haven't seen the lines for food like this in a very long time. And Johnny Rockus is now spilling out of the building, so there's that whole queue inside plus that. Crazy. At least it's a beautiful day to walk around. And Main Street Pub's line is also spilling out. The line inside Funnel Cake Factory isn't awful, so we decided to come here to get a snack. The wait to get ice cream was actually really short, very quick. And unfortunately, they do not have the peppermint flavor anymore that is only for Holiday in the Park. Looks like the location that used to be Liberty Snacks no longer has a sign, so maybe it's going to be renamed for the season. Over here at Flash Pass, they now have it doubling as pass holder services. So on the left is Flash Pass, on the right, pass holder services where you can get a season pass. So it looks like it's pretty popular today. And it looks like Harley Quinn's trains have been repainted for the 2024 season. They look really sharp and nice. Also, while sitting here watching Joker, I've noticed a major operational change to the ride. So the way it dispatches is completely different now. If you remember from the past, they used to dispatch two trains at a time. One would sit down there while the other goes through the layout, and then the other would dispatch as this one was getting closer to the brake run. But now that has changed, so it looks like they only dispatch one at a time. And there's a little SNS like starting chime that's on some of the air launch coasters. That's on this now. So it seems like the ride was reprogrammed, judging off of that. So I'm curious if this impacts throughput or not, because it definitely seems like it's a little slower. It also looks like it might only be on three trains, which could have something to do with it. But we are going to have to wait and see till when we ride it to know for sure. But there's definitely a change with the way this is operated. Additionally, over here, Villain's Cafe is no longer Villain's Cafe. It's Villain's Snacks. The little cafe on the orb up there has been removed. There's also just a lot more of these cash-to-card converters around the park. And these ones are different than the ones from last year. So if I were to go and start this up, from what I understand, you do need to put five dollars in first in order to get the card that's what uh sean was telling me not sure why but they are different this year inside looney tunes live there through the window you can sort of see sylvester the cat in there they are rotating through different characters throughout the day 
So right now, I believe it's Sylvester and Corky. So definitely check that out. Swung back around here, take a look at Flash while the lighting is a little different so I can actually see. And I think it might be every footer. Kind of hard to tell, but they go pretty far down. I don't think it's every footer. There's still that big dirt pile down there, but really exciting stuff. This building over here next to Skyscreamer appears to be nameless right now. You can see that they, of course, have the fact that pass holder service is now over there where we just showed you. But for now, looks like there's nothing in here. Still set up the same way it was before, just that now it is closed. It also looks like the Mama Flores patio they used to have over here is not open. The sign is also removed. They still have all the turf in there and everything, but no seating and the gate is now blocked off. You can see a pretty good shot of some of the flash construction going on right behind there, but this is not open currently. And it looks like this location here, which has been many different things over the years, is currently all boarded up uh, with some red curtains. Wonder what they're going to wind up doing with it in the future. I'm pretty sure it's unlabeled on the map right now. Uh, but we're walking over here to check on Justice League, which looks like it has a pretty solid line. Uh, it is spilling outside, so that's probably 30 minutes at least. Um, but it's also really interesting because I didn't notice this earlier. How you can see all the buildings up front from right here really makes it feel like old country from back in the day, which I wouldn't know about. But the fact that you can see all of Main Street from here is pretty cool. Oh. Sky Screamer stuck. <laughs> Got a new 50th anniversary logo on the scores. It did a little bit better this time. Excuse me. As you saw, we just did Justice League twice, thanks to our double rides, plus skip the lines that come with our membership. It's basically the exact same as it was last year, except the fog effect in the first little section of the ride is not working, but the wind effect and the like tunnel sequence with the train or the subway is much stronger. I don't remember it being that strong, but the blaster alignment is pretty much the same as it was last year. A couple of the rooms are a little less accurate. It pretty much depends on what seat you're in, but otherwise it was really good. Glad to get back on it. And considering I haven't done it in a little over three months now, I think it did pretty good. So I just got off the phone with Ace to discover that in the amount of time that we were just walking around the park aimlessly for a good 20, 30 minutes, getting our ice cream, rode Justice League twice, he just got his food from the pub. So I guess he, he really took a gamble there waiting so long. So we're gonna go meet up with him now. Just outside Six Flags Universe here, we have a display of some of the new merch items, which really, really do look nice. And right here, we have some of the new merch offerings that come from Made to Thrill. They're partnering with Great Adventure. You can see the original logo there too for El Toro and Nitro posters. And I do believe a couple of these hat designs are new. I don't remember seeing this many King Ka ones. I only remember that one. So these ones look fairly new to me. And there's this Jersey Devil one that looks really cool, as well as this El Toro one with what looks like bulls? Yeah, those are like flaming bulls. That's really cool. Looks like they're swapping out characters. There's Sylvester, looks like he just got his tail grabbed. And there's Porky back there. Now we're over on this side of the park. We're gonna try to get on Jersey Devil. We'll see if it happens. It was not for lack of trying, but Jersey Devil is on one train, and it's got a pretty sizable line. And Nitro also has a pretty big line. So no Nitro or Jersey Devil for me on this trip. Um, hopefully in a weekend or two the operations will be a little higher up in terms of train capacity one train on each of them very difficult to ride them right now but overall it's a pretty good opening day even though we didn't really get on that many rides typically opening day i view as a day of coming to check out what's new and not really getting on a bunch of rides you got plenty of time to get on a bunch of rides during spring break and the summer and all that unfortunately it looks like barnstormer didn't quite make it open for opening day i'm not sure why my best guess, truthfully, is probably staffing. I can't really think of, of any other reason why it uh, didn't make it, but I imagine it should be open at some point during the spring. But it does look great. I think the presentation's nice. You can see the little entrance sign under there. But uh, yeah, not quite yet. And over here as well, like I said, Skull Mountain won't be open for a bit. Uh, like I said, they're going to be doing some major improvements to it from what Brian said, which has me really excited. As you guys know from the videos, I've been a strong believer that Skull Mountain needs a refurbishment, and it sounds like it's getting some form of that this season, which I think is going to be great. And the last thing that's new that I didn't get to cover earlier today is the new Thrill Seeker shop. It's not open yet, so I'm not sure what kind of merch they're going to have in there, but we do have a nice new sign that matches the font of Junior Thrill Seekers. So I'm curious to see what they wind up selling in there once it opens. I do see some Jersey Devil shirts right there, so that could be what they're going to be selling in that store. 
Over here, this used to be the uh, garden where they had a bunch of different plants that were all different names. Looks like they've just kind of been replaced with flowers for now. Curious if they're gonna bring that back because it was really cool to see that last year. We were hoping food lines would have died down by now, but they're still pretty long. So we're over here again by the Flash construction site. Ace. Isn't it crazy to fathom the Flash is literally going to be right here? Yeah, I still can't fathom the old entrance, like a pathway, just to see that. Wow. Literally, right there. I mean, I don't know if the video does it real justice for you guys. The footers are literally just beyond this fence. So, you're going to be going to this bathroom. Giant non-inverting dive loop right here and the whole layout is going to go back there i really cannot wait to see this ride constructed this is probably going to change the park's appearance more than any other coaster has in a very long time wow how many footers about 20 footers yeah ace has the height advantage i can't really see so as we're walking around the park, we found Ben or G. Hey! How's your day been so far, Ben? Great, great, great. Um, I got on a couple of rides, Ben, and a couple of people with autism. Um, it's been a great day. Coastal season's back, baby! Absolutely. We decided to come down Dream Street one more time as the park is closing to take a look at how it looks at sunset and just breathtaking, honestly. One of the most beautiful things the park has ever implemented. Love the fifth tent, love the bricks. It just looks fantastic, especially with the carousels repaint. And a great change here at the park exit. No more turnstiles, so no more hold up over here getting stuck in them. You just walk straight through now. Great, great change. Also this new Today's Entertainment sign here, which shows the 50th anniversary, the Looney Tunes meet and greet, and the bricks. There's also some new EV chargers over there, which are finally operational, it looks like. I don't know if they're on quite yet, but they're all lined up down there pretty much ready to go. That is going to do it for Six Flags Great Adventures 2024 opening day, the start of a season that will definitely go down as one of the biggest, most significant, and best seasons. It was a great opening day, of course. There were hiccups, but compared to other opening days, the hiccups really were not that bad. All things considered, we had a great day. We got on a few rides, but opening day is never about getting on a ton of rides. It's coming, seeing everyone who's you've missed over the off season, getting to see what they've done new at the park. And in that regard, I think we had a great day. Tom, how was your day at the park? So we were kind of talking about this, how maybe it wasn't the best opening day from a ride standpoint, but for different reasons, it was the best because the park really did follow through on all these improvements that they were going to make. Toro's way smoother. Dream Street is now an open path. The carousel looks beautiful. Like there are so many great things going on and I cannot wait to see what comes to fruition throughout the rest of the season. Cannot wait to come back. Ace. Everything that Tom said, plus we got to speak to the park president and it was more of an enjoy relaxation feel today as opposed to riding a whole bunch of coasters. Worried about our coaster count, so it was great. Absolutely. Johnny? Oh, awesome day. I've been with both these guys right here. Um, finally got to be the park president today. It was an awesome experience today. And I enjoyed hanging out with you guys today. Absolutely. And Dad? Great day. I mean, if anything, I'll be a quite honest with you, the Dream Street pathway, they could have just did that and I'd be happy. Plain and simple. But the park looks absolutely fantastic. A lot of improvements and they're doing a really good job here. Definitely. And with all that being said, guys, that is going to conclude today's opening day vlog from Great Adventure. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos from Six Flags Great Adventure and other parks coming soon to Hollywood Studios. Goodbye, guys.